it's a hat day. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. I pray everyone's Friday is going great so far. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Give me one second. God bless you. God bless you. No. No, not anymore. To God be the glory. You must just start following me. Hey, Zandra. God bless you too. God bless you too, Mr. Void. Evangelist Richardson. All right, so y'all know how I do it. Hey, Google, stop. So y'all know how I do it. Um, this may be short. This may be long. I don't know. But you know, you can, whatever, if you have to go, go. You can catch the replay. Can y'all hear me okay? Hey, Latasha. Can y'all hear me okay? Hey, Google, stop. Listen. Listen to this. Y'all know I'm very, very transparent. Yeah, I got a hat on because I actually just finished jogging. Um, trying to get back up to jogging my three miles. Listen very, very carefully. One thing about me, I think y'all know I'm very transparent. There's nothing about Rashida that's a secret. Only thing that's private information is my social security number. That's it. My phone number is not is not private information. My email addresses are not private information. Uh, things that go on in my life aren't pri uh, private information. Everything about me is open and public. Hey, Jeanette, God bless you. Um, there's been a lot of talk, and I, and I don't know what it is, but it seems to me that everyone got something to say about somebody's relationship status. And what I'm noticing um, is that it comes from folks, a lot of these people, y'all unhappy in y'all own marriages. And because you stuck, you want other folks to be stuck. Okay, and, and, and let me let me tell you something. Let me go ahead and put this out here. I did a video about divorce in the church. Uh, go back and watch that video. I gave you Bible Um I don't believe in divorce. Unfortunately, I am divorced. However, uh, to God be the glory, I wasn't the one that filed for the divorce. My husband filed for divorce. And I was so happy that he did it, first of all, because it freed me biblically to marry again. And uh, secondly, I didn't have to pay for it. He did. And I'm all about your enemies making provisions for you. So here, here's the thing. A lot of these people, God bless you. God bless you, Dr. Mays. A lot of these folks that's in these relationships, they bound up. So they want you to stay bound up. Okay. Here's one thing about Rashida. All right. Um, I don't care how long. Don't come telling me nothing about your grandma and your granddad had been married for 50 years. Okay. When 30 of those years, your granddad was cheating on her. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. That's not a marriage. Okay. That's 50 years of bondage. Do you hear what I'm saying up in here today? And during those 30 years, ain't no telling how many outside kids that he didn't have. That's not a marriage. That's bondage. I don't care if your mama and your daddy was married for 30 years when 15 of those years, he was going upside her head just because he wanted to. Okay, listen to me very, very carefully. The numbers mean nothing. The numbers mean nothing when it's unhealthy or when it's un, uh, uh, unhappy. Do you hear what I'm saying on today? And a lot of y'all, y'all stuck in these marriages. I'm going to be very transparent. Y'all know me. I don't mind telling my business. Uh, I'm going to be very transparent. A lot of people, they stuck in these marriages. And then you want to down the ones that had, uh, that had the, the strength enough to leave. OK, just because you stuck in your marriage and you unhappy don't mean that the rest of the world have to be. OK, so don't come telling us nothing about how long your grandma been married and how long your, your granddaddy and your, uh, your mama, your daddy been married when they was cheating on her for half of the marriage. OK, or she was cheating on him for half of the marriage. That means nothing to us. OK, that was 50 years of bondage, not 50 years of marriage. Okay? The other thing is this. 
and, and, and here's the other thing. I know of a church and I see this often in church and I'm going to be very, very transparent. I went to this church. I didn't think I was at this church for a whole year and, and the church is in Florida. Okay. The church, y'all know me, the church is in Fort Walton beach, Florida. And, 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 and what, what I noticed was the, the, the pastor and the first lady, they not happy in their own marriage. And I, I'm going to tell you just how real and how disgusting this is. And the first lady, she cannot leave him because in her mind, she got low self-esteem and the husband is somewhat good looking, you know, tall, all that type of stuff, good looking. And, 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 and he can't, she, she can't, she won't leave because she got low self-esteem and she's at a place where she can't really wear high heels anymore. Okay. Because of things that have taken place with her body, God bless you, pumpkin, things that have taken place with her body. Well, I'm going to tell you, and this is a true, a very, very true story. He was preaching. And this man has a spirit of lust so bad. As a matter of fact, when I was introduced to them, I went to their house and I, y'all know me. I don't care who y'all go back and tell. Okay. Um, I went to their house. And when I got into the house, before I saw the husband, I saw the spirit of lust. And as it was taking me back there to their room, I saw the spirit of lust. And when I saw him, it was confirmed. Let me tell you how lustful this man of this, this, this man of God is. He was preaching in the pulpit and the church is very, very small. The way the church was set up at the time, you, the, the congregation was facing the front door. It was a little storefront church. OK, and the congregation was fa was facing the front door. So anybody that walked in, the whole church would see you when you walk in because, you know, the, this church was facing the front door. So his wife can't wear no four, five inch heels. OK, and it's evident that they unhappy in their marriage. I mean, they go back and forth. I mean, it's, 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 it's terrible. And so this young girl, the girl maybe was in her early 20s. She came walking in there with her church dress on and her uh, high stiletto heels. He was preaching. She got to church late. Do you know? That this man stopped his sermon and he said, let me tell y'all something. This is how women is supposed to dress. We want to see our women. The men want to see our women in heels. Now his wife sitting there can't wear no heels. That's how women need to look. Y'all stop wearing all these flats. His lust was just that bad. Let me tell you something. You be, you want to stay in an unhappy marriage? That's you. Okay, but don't be trying to make other folk feel bad because they husbands committed adultery and they had the audacity to leave and you afraid to leave because you got low self-esteem. The Bible says that fornication and adultery is grounds for divorce. Now, like I said, the divorce, the, the, uh, the video I did about divorce in the church, it tells you biblical grounds on it and they waste it small. No, don't go off on them. You need to deal with your husband. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me on today. I guess because this too real for you. This, 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 this too real for you. And so he's sitting in congregation and he lusts. Let me tell you something. I was a church of God in Christ missionary. Excuse me. I was a Kojic missionary. Okay. And for those of y'all that know about the church of God of Christ, we have to wear those habits. And a lot of times we wear our habits on first Sundays. You have the white habit, which is a ceremonial habit. And then you have the black habit, which is a, the civic habit. Okay. So when you have on these habits that the church of God in Christ, they design these missionary habits to not, they don't show anything. They don't enhance, they don't enhance your curves. They don't enhance your butt. They don't enhance your waist. It is, it's designed to make you look like a nun. It's designed to make you look as modest as possible. Okay. There was a guy at this church and I know that he kept looking at me and this went on for like months. He kept looking at me and he would keep looking at me and I would be on the front walk as we, you know, sat on front walk as a missionary. And every time I saw him, he was looking at me. And so one day, it was the first Sunday, I had on that habit, the nun uniform. The thing looked like a nun uniform. I had that on. And I was dancing in the spirit, you know, just praising God, dancing. I looked back and caught him looking at my backside. Now, here's my thing. You got lust so bad that you're going to lust after somebody that got a nun uniform on. And guess what? His wife was ushering at the time. His wife was an usher right there in the church while he's lusting after somebody else. And let me tell you something. Yo, you want to be unhappy as you. If you got low self-esteem and you think your husband is so fine that you got to stay in that marriage and be bound and you know he's cheating on you and you afraid to leave because you got low self-esteem, that's you. But don't project that onto anybody else that's trying to get free. Just because you bound, you trying to make other folks stay bound. No, it don't work that way. And so really what you're doing is they asked, and this is one of the things that, that the first lady I was telling you about that she did, she would ask me questions about my marriage. 
And she would never, ever come directly and ask me what she, I know she wanted to ask me about my sex in my marriage. I'm being real with y'all, but she would never, ever directly ask me because I think she knew the type of person, she knew the, the type of reaction she would get. And it, it dawned on me what she was doing was she was living vicariously through me. So if you choose to be in a place where you unhappy, that's you, but don't, 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 don't put that on us. Okay. And here's the other thing. Uh, y'all know what I experienced in my, in my most recent, uh, divorce. Okay. I'm going to be very, very transparent with y'all. When the marriage first started falling apart, I was falling apart. You know why? Because I was embarrassed because we had just got married. I had left everything I had to marry him. And so I was embarrassed and I was still trying to hold on. Even though he was out sleeping with all these uh, women and men and all that type of stuff, I was still trying to hold on. Okay. But then one day it hit me. I said, hold up. Chlamydia is real. Syphilis, gonorrhea, genital warts, genital herpes, all that stuff is real. And I had to come to myself. And then I accepted the fact that it was falling apart. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when I accepted the fact that it was falling apart, I was able to celebrate my freedom. And guess what? When that door closed, plenty of other doors opened. It was as if my ministry just launched. It was like supernatural trajectory because I let go of something that was toxic. And a lot of y'all take marriage advice from the wrong people. You can't go by what you see on Facebook. I don't care how many pictures they post on Facebook of them being all lovey-dovey. I don't care how many times they go to church and they match it and they look this and they look that and the kids look happy. I don't care how many times they post on Instagram, them at the movies and taking pictures of doing this and that and him buying her this ring and she buying him this suit. I don't care how many, you can't go by what you see on Facebook. Because let me tell you something. I know a couple right now that's been living in 20 plus years of bondage. You know why? Because every time they come out of their house they wear a mask and they got y'all food and so because they got y'all food they done put them over the marriage ministry and guess what all they doing is spitting venom into these people marriages because guess what and, and guess what let me tell you the thing about these marriages some of y'all women are so dominant and you all are so bold y'all ain't gotta like me up in here today do you do i care if you like me yes i do will i let it stop me absolutely not some of these women, y'all are so domineering and so bold. And, 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 and I know a couple, the same couple, the wife talked to the husband any kind of way. Been doing it since the day that they were dating. Talk to him any kind of way. In church, talk to him any kind of way. Talk to him any kind of way in front of the kids. Go to his job, talk to him any kind of way. Talk to him any kind of way at Walmart. Do you really think that that man is just going to sit there and take that and not find another outlet? Hmm? Do you really think that he is going to sit there, allow you to talk to him like a dog, allow you to belittle him in front of the church and not find an outlet? Hmm? And so guess what? Guess what happened? Because he wouldn't respond. I guess they thought that it was okay. Guess what happened? He started finding Facebook friends. Hmm? Start buying Facebook friends. And I remember one time I walked in on the individual I'm going to use one of the phones. I walked in on the individual. You know, sometimes you just know, you just know what's going on in the spirit. I walked in on him and I saw what was on his phone. And when I came, he put the phone down and I knew then that he had found another outlet because she, she, she public, she would publicly humiliate him and it's not okay. You can't go by what you see on Facebook. And then here's, here's, here, 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 here's, here's my thing with this. If you want to be unhappy, that's you. But don't try to make nobody else be unhappy. Don't try to make nobody else be unhappy. And it got to the point, it got to the point where he was doing it in the exact same house. You know why? Because he got tired of her belittling him in public. He got tired of her dog mouthing and, 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 and fussing at him in public as if he was a child. I mean, it was as, and it, sometimes it hurt my feelings. And I actually, I went to him, I said, why do you allow her to speak to you that way? She's equating you with the children. I mean, she literally would talk to him just like she did the children. I said, why do you allow her to talk to you that way? And you don't ever respond. And they didn't respond that time. They said nothing. Okay. But years later, when I found out, saw what was going on, I already knew what was up. I said, you done found another outlet. And so God bless you. God bless you, Apostle. God bless you, Apostle Kendra Carr. And so I knew that he had found another outlet. And so don't try to hold on to something that's toxic. And listen, let, let me... Here's my thing. If you choose to stay, if you choose to stay in that type of environment, that's you. Okay. But when you see someone that has broken free, 
Okay, and they're living their blessed life. Don't and don't 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 interject your opinion just because you mad and you unhappy with where you are. Okay, because what's going to happen is because and I, I've seen this happen. I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I'm telling you what I've seen firsthand. What's going to happen is you're going to wake up and you're going to be 60 years old. And then you're going to wake up one day mad, depressed because you realize that you have given your best years of your life to someone that didn't even deserve it. You're going to realize that you love someone that does not feel the same way about you. One thing about me, I'm a, I'm a protector. I protect people. I believe in protecting people's reputation. Okay, but here's the thing. I had to realize that the individual didn't feel the same way about me. So if you choose to stay, that's you. But don't miss, don't, don't interject your hurt onto somebody else. Okay, like I said, watch the video that I did on divorce in the church because I give you Bible. I had to write some stuff down. Okay, and let me say this right here. Let me say this right here. If a man is interested in you, he is going to pursue you. There is nothing more disgusting and nothing more, I mean, it's more distasteful than a woman pursuing after a man. He can't even, poor thing, he can't even sleep at night because you blowing his phone up with text messages. Listen, the, the fun part about this, ladies, is that they get to chase us. We don't chase them because see, if I'm chasing you, that means that you running from me and only a fool will sit up and try to go grab a grown man that's running from them, honey. If he running from you, it's because he's not interested. Well, he gave, God bless you, mother. Well, he gave me his phone number. He probably done gave 19 women his phone number that same day. You ain't no different. You ain't no different. And one thing about Rashida, I do not chase. God bless you, missionary Ziegler. I do not chase. I do not chase. I do not chase. And people give me their phone number. Guys, they give me their phone number. Go ahead and call me. No, I'm not calling you. Okay, because I know my I know my worth. I'm not finna call you and you try to set me up and go through my phone. Yeah, man, look, you know the evangelist, the one that be on Facebook all the time. Look, you know what? You know what? She called me this day. She called me that day. You're not finna set me up. So guess what? If you want to pursue after Rashida, you're gonna have to call, you're gonna have to call me. I'm not calling you. I don't do that. Because I know my word. And y'all texting these men, blowing their phone up. And every time he look at the call ID, the poor thing, he sigh. And he regret that he gave you his phone number. If he want you, he will chase after you. And let me tell you this. Y'all ain't going to like me up in here. Okay, y'all ain't going to like me up in here. But let me tell you something. Man, you have to give a woman that something. You have to show her that you're worth. That you're worth what she has to offer you. God made sure Adam had a job. God made sure Adam had a place to stay before he gave him Eve. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. God made sure, God made sure Adam had a job. God made sure Adam had a place to stay before he gave him a wife. Adam had responsibilities. Adam had a place to stay. He had responsibility. There was a job that he was supposed to do. God made sure that he was established before he gave him a wife. And some of y'all, y'all, y'all want to help me, but it's like y'all want us to be vasty. Y'all only want to tag us in whenever y'all want to tag us in. Y'all want us to be vasty. And so what y'all want to do is y'all want to parade us around when you got your friends over. You want to parade us around at the Holy Convocation. And then you want to parade us around up at the front of the church when they doing an appreciation for you so that they can come see our flat stomach and small waist and all this and that. Y'all just want y'all want us to be vasty. Y'all want us to be y'all helpmate when y'all want us to be y'all helpmate. But when it comes down to correcting you, when it comes down to getting down to the ugly core, the part of you, when it comes down to critiquing the part of you that don't nobody see but us that need work, then you don't want us to be a helpmate. So y'all just want us to be Vashti and y'all want to tag us in when y'all want to tag us in. But guess what? Vashti reached a point where she got tired. There was consequences for disobeying the king. There was consequences for being disobeying the king. But Vashti said, I'm not coming out this time because you only want me to be your wife when you want me to be your wife. You really think that that's going to last me? We weren't created to be your helpmate whenever you wanted us to be. We were created to be your helpmate through the good, the bad, and the ugly. We were created to be your helpmate when your friends are around and even when your friends aren't around. We're not Vashti's. We asked us. You chose us because we was qualified. Let us help you. Let us be the helpmate. Don't tag us. This ain't no tag football. Tag us when you, when you, when you want us. What is that? And then you wonder why your wife ain't fulfilled. Y'all ain't got to light me up in here. Y'all ain't got to light me up in here. 
Y'all ain't got to light me up in here and, and let, me, let me deal with this because I'm seeing a lot in my singleness. I'm seeing a lot in my singleness. And let me tell you something. You know, while I'm dealing with this, some of y'all y'all people, some, some of y'all parents, y'all can scar y'all children, especially single women. I don't know what it is about single women having men over their house and you having sex with these men and your children are right there in the next room. If nothing... Let me tell you something. You're going to mess around and you're going to give your child a visual that they cannot get rid of. Y'all have got to read my book. Y'all have got to read my book. If y'all knew some of the stuff that I saw. Now, it's one thing when you marry. Okay? And you marry. You forget to lock the door. Y'all ain't got used to each other. Then your children bust in. That's them. Okay? You, you, it's easy for you to come back there. They say, Mama, Daddy, what y'all doing? Your response is, we married. How you think you got here? Okay, but when your child see you having sex with different men and they bust in their room, and if you have to be a hoe, at least you need to do, you need to at least make sure you lock the door. If you're going to be a hoe, lock the door. Hoes, lock the door. Don't sit up there and scar your children. Let me tell you something. One thing, I keep it real. My children and I, we read, God bless you, Apostle, Apostle Blair. One thing, uh, my children and I, y'all know we recently moved. I'm single now, okay? I have two younger boys. For some reason, they thought that because they knew that the prophet was no longer here, that they could just bust in my back room, my bedroom. And so I sat them both down. Even my two-year-old, I talked to him like he understand. I sat them both down. I said, y'all, listen to this. Mommy's not married right now, but mommy will be married again. And son, if you bust into my room when mommy's married, you just may get a visual in your head that you can't get rid of and you may be scarred for the rest of your life. So you need to knock just like you did when mama's married. You need to knock on mama's door. Train your children. Tra have some respect for your children. Train your children not to just bust in your room. They don't need to just be busting in your room. You're married. Y'all don't like me up in here. It's too real for you. You know, but y'all call me the see-through evangelist because I got to keep it real. I'm trying to help the church. I talk about stuff that folks don't want to talk about. Y'all you, 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 sitting up there having sex. Y'all going to have to read my book. Y'all be surprised at by the time. I said this before. By the time I was 13, this is no joke. By the time I was 13, I had done more. I had seen more than any 30-year-old woman. Hmm? Can I, can I be real with y'all? I had done more. And then it was the environment that I was in. That's why I say, what your kids, they know more than you think that you know. And when you having sex with all these different men, it scars your child. Your child don't forget that. Okay. And now because you used to be a hoe, every time you see your daughter uh, on the phone with another boy, every time you see your daughter uh, uh, walking down the street with another boy, in your mind, she hoeing because that's what you used to do. When the reality is, if your daughter is anything like I was, I hung around men because I didn't like hoeish activities. I hung around dudes because I wasn't a messy female and I couldn't stand gossip. I couldn't stand mess. So my crew consisted of a bunch of dudes because they were peaceful. They didn't gossip. They didn't start mess. But you know what? I was called a hoe because the women, well, some of the women in my family, that's what they did. So they thought I was doing the same thing, but it wasn't the case. You don't know what your children see. You don't know what your children see. And so we already talked about this. Y'all chasing after these men. Well, why you always got to text him? And some of y'all men, y'all so, let, let, let me, let me go ahead and put this out here. Let me go ahead and put this out here. If some of y'all, if, if you can't, if you, if you discouraged by how many men you think are pursuing the female that you interested in and you allow that to cause you to step back. You already disqualified because see, if you want me, you're going to have to pursue me because you sit back and you didn't got disgusted. It's going to always be someone that have your eye, have their eyes on your wife. It's going to always be another woman that have their eyes on your husband. But when you secure that thing and you lock it tight, you know, can't nobody get me from you, boo. Can't nobody get you from me. Can't nobody get me from you. Y'all ain't going to like me up in here because it's, it's, it's too, it's too real. It's too real. It's too real. It's too real. And let me talk about this. Uh, I, I had to take notes because a lot of stuff. I was just getting stuff and getting stuff and getting stuff. Let me talk to you about these interracial relationships. Okay. Who cares? You don't have to be black and mad. You don't, just because you black don't mean you have to marry another black person. Just because you Asian don't mean you have to marry another Asian person. Just because you white don't mean that you have, God bless you, Apostle Bolger, don't mean you have to marry another white person. 
Moses married an Ethiopian woman. And y'all stop letting folks get in y'all business and dictate your future, dictate your marriage. Look, Moses married an Ethiopian woman. Read Numbers 12. And he married her and his own sister and brother turned against him and they start talking against him because he had married someone that they did not approve. But let me tell you something. Your marriage is your marriage. But guess what? When it comes down to it, you ain't going to be having sex with your sister and your brother. You're going to be having sex with your family. You're going to be laying with your spouse. So don't you sit there and allow your spouse, allow your family to ruin your marriage. Don't you sit back and allow your kids to ruin your marriage. Let me tell you something about kids. And I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be very real with y'all. Because uh, my mom, she got remarried when I was, I think, 11. 11 or 12 years old. Yeah, 11 or 12 years old. And I purposely, because I had my own issues, you know, from, from age, from age seven up until age 13, I had, I had a lot of issues. Okay. And I purposely was trying to, I'm being real. Can I be real with y'all? I was 13. I purposely tried to destroy their marriage when I was 13 because of stuff that I had seen. Your children will destroy your marriage. If you sit there, you allow your children to disrespect your husband. You sit there, you allow your children to disrespect your wife. Your children will destroy your marriage. And guess what? They will go on, build a new life, finish college, get a degree, build a happy marriage and ignore you every time you call because they feel like you are in the way and that you're intruding on their privacy. So they'll destroy your marriage, but they'll go on and live happily lives. Let me tell you something. You are not the only people you, God bless you, Mother Sabrina, the only people you are, are, are obligated to take care of for a lifetime is your spouse. God never meant for you to take care of your children all your life. You raise your kids to get out your house. God never meant for a husband to take care of his daughter the rest of his life. God never meant for a mother to take care of, 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 the, of their son for the rest of their life. The only person you are required to take care for the rest of your life is your wife and your husband. Marriage is the only relation. Y'all don't like me, but it's okay. Marriage is the only relationship where you have to make a vow. You don't have to make a vow to become a parent. You don't have to make a vow to become a sister. You don't have to make a vow to become a cousin, an auntie, a brother, a niece, a nephew. But when you say you're going to become a wife and you say you're going to become a husband, you have to take a vow. And usually you take that vow beyond witnesses so that folks can hold you accountable. Y'all don't like me up in here. You don't like me. Do I care? Yes. Will I let it stop me? Absolutely not. The only person you are allowed and trained, like, and like I said before, train your kids to not bust in your room. Because I already told my kids at eight and two, when mama remarry again and you decide y'all want to bust y'all the tails up in here, you may be scarred for the rest of your life because mommy's going to enjoy her marriage. And some of y'all allow y'all kids to destroy the sexual fun that you're supposed to have in marriage. Lock the door. And women don't sit there and deprive your husband because you know you got kids. You got a do. Lock the door. Lock the door. And if you're very protective over your kids, I'm going to be real, real transparent with y'all. Okay, both of my kids have the same father. You know, women, after you have a baby, or for men, in case y'all don't know, they don't have kids. After a woman has a baby, she can't have intimacy for a while. I don't know, I think it's like six weeks. I don't know, six weeks, however many weeks it was. Okay. Um, usually the baby is like two months. Okay, before the doctor released the female to go and be intimate again. Let me tell you, because I was so messed up as a child and some of the stuff that I had seen. My oldest son was maybe two and a half months before the doctor released me to be intimate with my husband again. Junior couldn't even talk, couldn't walk, couldn't roll over. He was well, he was crawling at three days old. I have to tell you all about that. Couldn't talk, couldn't roll over. None of that. And I'm trying not to be explicit, but I told, I told their dad, I told my husband at the time and I said, <laughs> Pastor Bozer, you know, <laughs> Apostle, <laughs> Apostle Bozer, <laughs> he put, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> he know how long it's supposed to be. Anyway, I, <laughs> I told my, <laughs> I told, I told their dad, I said, listen, keep in mind, Junior couldn't walk, couldn't roll over, none of that. I said, if we're going to do this, you need to make sure that that door is locked. You need to make sure 
that that baby is asleep. Even though he can walk, I had that much respect for my child. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin. I have to be transparent because I, I just refuse to live a lie. I had that much, <laughs> I had that much respect for my child. Some of y'all don't respect y'all kids, okay? Respect them, but at the same time, don't allow them to destroy your sexual fun because the bedroom of marriage is what? It's undefiled. Okay, it's supposed to be a fun place. What y'all do it? Have fun. You're supposed to have fun in the bedroom. Don't sit up and let folks destroy your marriage. Okay, now understand this. I've said this before. I'm gonna say it again. Marry what you like. I'm qualified to talk about this. Okay, I'm not talking about marry what you like. Marry. <laughs> Apostle Bolger, I can't with you. I can't with you. Marry what you like. Okay, and here's why I say this because if you marry what you like. Your, 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 your natural attraction towards your spouse will sustain. See, if you sacrifice what you like, I'm going to give you an example. I've, I've used this example before. I'm going to use it again. I have short hair, okay? Most men don't like women with short hair, okay? I'm not being no kind of way. I'm being, I'm being real, <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Juliet. I'm being real. Most men do not like women with short hair, okay? So I have short hair, okay? But I also have a flat stomach, wide hips, all that type of stuff that most men do like, okay? But most men like long hair. And I say this before, don't settle for the appearance of my body when you know that your thing is long hair. Because guess what? The chances of me growing my hair back out again may not ever happen. I may have decided to keep my hair short for the rest of my life. But you settle and you sacrifice for my body when the number one thing that you like is long hair. And so guess what? It may work good for a year. It may work good for two years. But the minute you see another female that have long hair and you're forced to be in constant interac interaction with her, meaning that she comes to start, join the church, she comes to the church every Sunday, she's at every Bible study, or you end up, uh, someone get hired on your job that is the ideal, uh, 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 have the appearance of what it is that you like, guess what? You are going to start taking the attraction that you have for Rashida and you're going to start giving it to her. Do you understand what I'm saying? Simply because you sacrifice with me. Does it make sense what I'm saying? And we say physical appearance don't matter. You're right. It don't. But here's the thing. I'm going to look at you more than I look at myself. You're going to look at me more than you look at you. The only time I see myself is when I look in the mirror in the morning, when I look in the mirror during the midnight, and when I look in the mirror uh, during, the, during the night. That's the only time I see myself. So I actually see myself maybe three times a day. But I'm going to see you hours upon hours in the day. So you want to marry. If you have to look at them, you want to marry someone that you are attracted to. Okay, because if you marry someone that you're attracted to, the spirit of lust is not likely to overtake overtake you. You know why? Because you, you know you like uh, uh, wide hips and that stuff. You say, oh, they can't get me that. My wife got wide hips. I don't care how pretty her feet is. My wife got pretty feet. That's why I say marry what you like. Marry what you like. Okay? And it will keep you holy. It will help keep you holy. That way you ain't lusting every time you see something that you like. Women, if you know you like men that slim and athletic build, don't go getting that man hopes up when you know he 800 pounds. Don't go get his hopes up. Okay? Because what's going to happen is, God bless you, Mother Sabrina, you helping me. What's going to happen is, it's going to be good for about a year. Okay? But the minute you say you want to go jogging, Okay, because you want to work on your beach body if you like me. I'm all about my beach body right now. I ain't having no more kids. I done got too old. It's all about Rashida right now. And so the minute you decide that you want to go jogging and you want to work on your beach body, okay, and then the post thing, because he love you, he 800 pounds, he love you. And so post thing going to go to the track and he going to try to run. But the post thing so heavy that the minute he take three steps, he out of breath, got to bend over. And now you mad. That's all you got. And now you fussing at him, humiliating him in public. But it's all stem because you married something that you did not like do y'all understand what i'm saying do you understand what i'm saying it's not all about the appearance it's not all about the appearance but if you're going to marry someone marry someone that you find attractive marry someone that you one <laughs> mother's a brain marry someone that you find attract attractive if you know you have okay how tall am i i did i did how tall i'm five five okay I, most majority of my heels are at least four inches. I have some three, at least four inches. Okay. So the, the ideal height for me is someone that's five, eight or five, nine, because when I put my heels on, this is just me. When I put my heels on, I don't want to put my heels on. Like, Baby, where you went? Oh, oh, you down now. Get up. Pull your shoes up. Come, come up here. 
Because here's my thing. I don't, when, when, I, I don't like, I, no, I won't do this again. When I don't like being taller than my guy. Okay. I don't want to be two inches. I don't want to be no more than two inches taller than you when I put my heels on. Okay. Because this is just my preference. Don't judge me for my preference. I'm not going to judge you for your preference. Okay. You may want somebody that's a size two, but she ain't a size two. And so I'm not going to judge you for what you like. And please don't judge me for what I like. So I don't want to be towering over my man because I feel like I'm protecting you. If I'm all, even I do got heels on, I'm telling you, I'm going to feel like I'm protecting you. And like, I'm the one that got your bag. And I'm going to feel like, get, get, please get, 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 don't make no Johnson and Murphy with no four inch heels that you can wear. And so I, I, marry what you like. That's the bottom line. Marry what you like. Marry what you like. If you know you like super tall men that's at least 6'2", don't marry a man that's 5'8". Men, if you know you like women that are a size uh, 3, don't marry in a woman that wears a size 22 because you're not going to be fulfilled. Okay? You're not going to be fulfilled. If you like a woman that got long hair, don't marry the woman that got short hair because if she got short hair, she anything like me. And if you like woman, let me tell you, here's a fun fact about Rashida. Fun fact Friday. Okay. I'm very, very different. Very, very different. Here's a fun fact about me. I don't eat anything with a spoon, nothing but soup. That's it. I don't even eat ice cream with a spoon. I hate eating with a spoon. I eat ice cream with a fork. That's a fun fact about me. So if you're going to be married to me, you have got to accept the fact that if you and I go to Baskin Robbins, I'm not going to ask for a spoon. I'm going to ask for, ma'am, do you have a fork for my it's ice cream? Yes. I need a fork for my ice cream. You heard correctly. I need a fork. For my ice cream, I'm going to eat my ice cream with a fork. I don't like eating with spoons. So, and, and that's why it's important to really, really get to know people. Some, some people may not like that. I don't eat anything with a fork, with a spoon, okay? I eat with forks, okay? So, if you know, and then here's one thing about Rashida. Do not get attached to my hair. A lot of people, they like my hair because it's soft and it's shiny. But guess what? When I get bored, I'm liable to just go ahead and cut one side of it off. I'll die <laughs> Apostle Bozer, I can't with you. Show sure can't. Look, might well just go ahead and just sell them. Sell them all. And so, uh, I'm liable to dye my hair pink. I'm liable to dye my hair orange. I'm, I do drastic things with my hair. So, if you know you like somebody that got long hair, Rashida ain't for you. The best I can do is show you pictures when I had long hair. I know, mother. Look, fork, please. I can't, I can't do nothing with a spoon. All right. So, we talked about the kids busting in our rooms. Okay, because when that happens, when your children walk in on you having sex, they don't ever forget that. Okay, now it's easy for them to deal with it when y'all are married. But if your child walk in and you have it, that's a, that's a visual that they don't ever forget. Okay, so we talked about the kids busting into the bedroom. We talked about marrying what you like. Uh, Missionary Zingler, you, you helping me on tonight. You're going to grow it. <laughs> Miss Sabrina, you're so funny. Okay, and we talked about, uh, okay, let me deal with this one last thing that we're going to get off of here. Okay, because this is something I was actually asked, okay, because I am a preacher. Don't let nobody put you in a box. We know, this, we know that in Numbers 12, Moses married someone that was, it was completely unorthodox for him to marry. He went against tradition, okay? And a lot of times women in ministry, we have, we feel like we have to marry another guy in ministry. Don't let nobody box you in. And so you, you, you look in, you, you won't even give a guy a time of day if he don't have a clergy collar. Let me tell you something. A lot of the people that wear these collars, they the biggest hoes. Ask me how I know. Hmm. So the bottom line is don't let nobody dictate who you marry. Don't let nobody dictate who you marry, okay? Because guess what? This time, Rashida is doing it with no third party. And I'm going to decide who I marry. I'm going to decide who I marry, okay? I'm going to decide who I marry. And a lot of y'all, y'all have left. Y'all have turned down good men all because your children did not like them. And the only reason your children did not like them is because they taking you away from them. Huh? Your children ain't going to be in your house all day. Your children ain't going to be in your house for the rest of your years. Huh? Your children, they don't like the fact that it was just always you and him, you and them. And so now they're taking some, look, Junior, Junior don't pay no bills. He don't dictate who mama marry. Okay. But I, you can back and bet you this. I watched the interaction between how, whoever it is that I may have interest in. And the only reason you, you're not going to meet my kids 
you, I, I, we, we need to have had some some discussions first before you start interacting with my children. You can say, hey, that type of stuff. But Junior don't dictate who my, who makes mommy happy. Junior don't pay bills. Okay? So, all right. I think I pretty much covered everything. Y'all know how to reach me if you need me. I know some of y'all mad. I know, uh, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, it is what it is. I love you all. I'm going to go work out for the second time today because I feel just that good. I love you all. Y'all be blessed.